In Acadia Parish today, high winds leveled buildings, knocked over trucks, and sent debris flying, bringing down trees and power lines in its path, the storm being blamed for the death of a young woman. Today's severe weather hit rain especially hard. There were injuries and also that one death, a young mother who was in her home when a tree came crashing down. We have team coverage on this storm tonight, and we begin with Tracy Wirtz, who spoke with the victim's family. Tracy. That's right, Jim. I've spent the better part of the day here in rain, where 1,500 people were affected by this tornado that struck here uh, in rain, kind of hopped throughout town. We took a tour earlier today, and I'll tell you, it's like a bomb went off in the northwest section of the town. There were trampolines on roofs and, and just houses completely demolished. Lives turned upside down, and especially the life of one family. I visited with the uncle of uh, the victim, the, the very young mother today, who was first on scene. And then everybody come out, I guess, after it passed, and, uh, you know, noticed that, man, there was nothing but broken trees and roofs off of different houses. And then uh, you started uh, seeing people running. When we got down there, we saw that the tree had then fell and collapsed in the house and that uh, they were all trapped in the house. Daniel Cole says it took them an hour to pull his 22-year-old niece, Jaleesa Granger, along with her mother and her one-year-old baby from their demolished home on Bailey Street in rain. Cole says at first they thought Jaleesa had simply passed out from the stress of a harrowing situation. Uh, it's confirmed over at the hospital that she had a heart attack in the process of all of this. I asked about the baby and Jaleesa's mom. She's doing well now finding out that Jaleesa has passed away, you know, but uh, like I said, she's doing okay. The baby's doing okay. And uh, it's just something that we everybody's going to have to pull together, you know, as a family and console each other. Mr. Cole tells me that he has never been through a tornado before and it's something he would never wish on his worst enemy. And of course, the thoughts and prayers of the entire rain community and of course of Acadiana will be with that family. Uh, some of the electricity here in rain has been restored uh, and they're very thankful for that. In terms of the area behind me, uh, maybe by tomorrow it will be restored and of course we'll keep you updated as they begin to recover here in the city of rain. For now, reporting from Rain, I'm Tracy Wirtz for KATC TV3. Big story this weekend, the city of Rain picking up the pieces after yesterday's deadly tornado. Take a look at aerial images that were taken today over Rain. According to the National Weather Service, an EF2 tornado touched down yesterday just after 10 a.m. It had sustained winds of up to 135 miles per hour and was 300 yards wide, five miles long. Approximately 1,500 people have been displaced because of that damage which left 12 people injured and a young mother dead. 21-year-old Jaleesa Granger was killed when a tree came crashing through her home yesterday. Governor Bobby Jindal has declared a state of emergency in rain as the cleanup continues. And KTC's Mike Magnoli was with the governor today as he toured the damage. The damage is tremendous. The, the only way to, to truly understand is to see it. And see it, he did. Governor Jindal walking among the dilapidated structures that used to be homes in rain. At his first stop, the governor remarking how unfair and random a twister can seem. I grew up in Baton Rouge, and I remember certainly well, we've been through our share of tornadoes, and I've seen the damage it did in the neighborhood that I grew up in when I was a, a younger child. A lot of times you'll see one house devastated, you'll see a house right next to it still intact. Standing in this field of debris, it's hard to believe this was a house on Saturday. Now there's no part of the structure left standing. Any cleanup or recovery effort was impossible Sunday because during the daylight hours, the hardest hit neighborhood was off limits because the debris field was too hazardous, jagged objects and downed power lines. At 7 o'clock Sunday night, the streets reopened, strict city curfew at 10. Well, Saturday morning we got the call that it was hit here and they sent us over here to assess the damage and make it watertight and seal it up. From residential to business, this man is an out-of-state contractor. An hour after the twister hit, his crew got a call to come repair O'Reilly's auto parts on Rain's main street. Anything that's hanging or that can fall from the ceiling is removed uh, so it doesn't fall on anybody or hurt anybody. Secondly, get anything, all the glass and any shop objects up. The sweeping and picking up will resume Monday on what should be a party day, Lundi Gras as it's called. There's a lot of serious work to be done. In Rain, Mike Magnoli reporting, KATC TV3.
12 people were injured, killed in the storm. One person was killed, 21-year-old Jaleesa Granger. Witnesses say she was in the house with her 15-month-old son when an oak tree crashed through the roof that she was sharing also with her mother and brother. What we want to show you now is a bird's eye view of the Granger home. As always, the picture tells the story. That house looks as if a giant hand came out of the sky and simply punched it. The houses immediately around it, so often the case in uh, tornadoes, were not even touched. Now, we're here on the scene on Bella Street where that fatality did occur, and that's where we're live tonight with what remains of the home. Joining me now is KETC uh, reporter Mike Magnoli, who has spent much of this day in and around this area, Northwest Rain. And Mike, uh, tell us about what you saw today, talking with other residents who were lucky enough to survive this horrific experience. Well, Hoy, as you said, this is the spot that claimed the storm's only fatality, but you don't have to go very far within the field of damage to find someone who is related to the victim, someone who knew the victim. In a small community like Rain, you Tight find knit. that everyone is connected. Lundi Gras in Rain, but you don't hear crowds cheering or big bands playing. Rather, this neighborhood is abuzz with saws, cranes, and trucks. Yes, I'm very, I mean, very frustrated. My grandmother, we just remodeled the trailer on the inside, and everything is just all messed up all over again. Naomi Senegal's trailer is mostly intact, but look closer. It's been blown onto an angle, and a few pieces of it did go flying in all directions. Oh, that was the ramp. It was the ramp that's going to the front door, but it ended up in the tree in the graveyard. Inspectors have told Naomi it's not safe to stay here. She only has two hours to pack a bag and leave. And this is all the more difficult because Naomi's cousin is the young woman who died in the storm while protecting her baby. So right now we's at a local motel, but I mean, I don't know the next step. Another family who's recovering, their saga played out in this house. Karen Coleman was preparing for her wedding on Saturday. We were about to steam the dress and just everything just started just shifting and we all hit the floor. The tornado nearly leveled the place, but Karen's wedding went on as scheduled. No power, so it was a ceremony by candlelight in a local hall. I'm always going to remember this day as my wedding day. It was a tragedy, but at the same time, we'll never forget it, and it's just going to make us stronger. People pulling together, uh, cleaning up the damage, getting on with their lives. Mike, I think it's safe to say this is a Mardi Gras weekend. This community will not uh, forget for a very long time. Most definitely, Hoyt, and I'm going to have another profile with another survivor of the storm. More recovery efforts coming up tonight at 6. Thanks a lot, Mike, for your story. Well, joining us now, uh, first of all, we want to show you inside the tornado. This is what it looked like, the surveillance video. This is courtesy, by the way, of Mesh's uh, drugstore in rain. More than 1,500 people were put out of their homes when this storm ripped through. It, that picture pretty much tells it all, folks. There were gas leaks and power outages throughout the city. Joining us now live is Mayor of Rain, Jim Pettijon, who this afternoon has been in a briefing about where we go from here, Mayor. Sure, well, you know what, I can tell you what, you're seeing some of the acts that are happening in the city of Rain. You've got local people that own equipment that came in and donated their services to the family to erase that bad memory. That's a bad part of their lives today. And, uh, on behalf of the family, they appreciate all the outpouring of support for them and everyone else in their prayers. Uh, Restoration is going extremely well. I'm going to tell you, we have a resilient people that live here in the city of Rain. They help each other out, and you know we don't wait for anyone else to come in. We do it ourselves. Well, Mayor, how many people are still without power who have have yet to be reconnected to the power? Right company? now, the latest number that I got was right at 100. We had 500 houses that were in the affected area. 100 are still without power. Either they have service issues, and what well, we're Encouraging them to do is once you are able to restore power and you have your services up and running, call 334-6631, which is our 24-hour line, and we'll have our electrical crews come out and restore the services to you. Now, the safety fire, the state fire marshal is checking on the safety of those houses. Absolutely. Right? The fire marshal has come through and provided a great service to us where they're doing the uh, assessment of all of the homes in the affected areas. All right. And so, therefore, you have a real accurate estimate of it all. Okay. Thank you so much. And we're going to let you get back to this. And I know that you, uh, it's a big job, but as you said, everybody's pulling together. Got a good community. Thank so you very much. Coming up later, we're going to let people know how they can help out, too. Thank you, Mayor Pettis. Thank you, Hoyt. Jim Pettisjohn joining us tonight. Now to the latest as cleanup is underway in rain. This surveillance video is from Mesh's drugstore in rain as the tornado was passing. More than 1,500 people were put out of their homes after the storm. There have been gas leaks and power outages throughout the city. Our team coverage starts with Hoyt Harris live in rain. Hoyt joining us with the very latest. 
Marcel, I'm standing in Northwest Rain right now on Bella Street. This is where a life was taken Saturday morning in a house that did stand right back here. There's very little left. They've been working just extremely fast the last couple of hours, removing the debris and cutting down a tree. Uh, what we want to tell you now is that the National uh, Weather Service now says that Saturday morning tornado was an EF2. What that means is, is that the twister had winds as high as 135 miles an hour. In all, some 150 houses in rain were either damaged or destroyed. 12 people were injured, and as we said, one person was killed. She was 21-year-old Jaleesa Granger. Uh, and tonight, I am joined uh, uh, by her mother. Uh, her mother comes to us uh, within her first interview, exclusive interview here on uh, KATC, and her name is Kathy Gidry. And Kathy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. First of all, tell us what it was like. You were in that house too Saturday morning, about 10:30. What what was going on? What did you hear? When I when I opened up the curtain, all I could see it was pitch black. The winds were real high at that time. And all I had time enough to do is to just run and alert my family to get down on the floor. Mm -hmm. And they were, it was, it was, I just couldn't get there to save them in enough time. <laughs> and this young man playing with the microphone is Tyreek. This is Jaleesa's 15-month-old yes. son. I guess he'll be staying with you now? Yes, he will be. Well, you told me earlier that you, you have felt a great outpouring of heartfelt condolences and help uh, from the community of Rain, and you wanted to thank everybody. The stage is yours. Yes. I want to thank everybody that put in a help to save my family. And because of a community that was so loving and so caring, they got in and they saved my entire family. Jaleesa, I may have lost, but I've seen the love and the community came together like never before. And this is the gift that Jaleesa leaves behind forever. And we just want to personally say thanks to everyone that put a hand in, that called, that did anything. We really appreciate it. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. And I know you mean that. Thank you so much. Kathy Gidry, the mother of the victim. Now, what we need to tell everybody now, they've been wondering about what's going to happen to the students at Rain High School since it has suffered damage as well. We can tell you tonight that students of Rain High will be getting an extra day off while the crews continue cleaning up there. The students won't go back to school until Thursday. All other Acadia Parish students do return, though, on Wednesday, the day after Mardi Gras. Now, Rain High School employees should also return to work on Wednesday. The superintendent is telling KTC that the most significant damage to Rain High is in the form of busted out windows, water damage to the floor, and roof damage. All Acadia Parish schools will be open on Wednesday, with the exception of Rain High School. Rain High was heavily damaged in Saturday's tornado. Tonight, KETC's Jim Hummel gives us a glimpse of the damage. From the air, it's clear Rain High School was not spared by Saturday's tornado. Patches, a temporary fix where chunks of the roof were blown away, leaving water damage inside. Principal Bobby Hamlin gave us a tour through the hallways of Rain High School, where most of the cleanup is already complete, save for the worst hit areas like the gymnasium. We've got a lot of water damage in the North Gym. We have a real good wooden floor in there, so this company's come in, they put a they put visqueen over the whole floor and they're going to and they're blowing uh, air in it right now and they're drying it out and hopefully by Wednesday we'll be able to look under there and see what happened. And there's plenty of damage outside as well. Out here on the track, high winds brought down tree limbs and power lines and those same high winds also pounced on the Mighty Wolves scoreboard. Tree damage, a lot of uh, debris blown in and stuff like that and you know basic just turmoil from after a tornado, whatever you're going to normally get, you got. Out in front, the school lost a few trees and a pile of bricks is all that's left of a gift from the class of 1956. And since Saturday, crews have been working nonstop to get the campus back to normal. From the first hour after it hit, there was people out here on response helping picking debris up. And uh, the community's just been wonderful. We've had a lot of help from the community, a lot of volunteers. As, you can, as, you, uh, as we walked around, you saw most of the campus is ready. I think we'll be ready for the students as soon as we can get them in and everything. And it, it really looks good. Classes at Rain High School resume on Thursday. In Rain, Jim Hummel, KTC TV3.